Well, good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, and we're going to read chapter 13 today. It's called Bunce's Giant Storehouse. My dear Foxy, cried Badger, what in the world has happened to your tail? Don't talk about it, please, said Mr. Fox. It's a painful subject. They were digging a new tunnel. They dug on in silence. Badger was a great digger, and the tunnel went forward at a terrific pace now that he was lending a paw. Soon they were crouching underneath yet another wooden floor. Mr. Fox grinned slyly, showing sharp white teeth. If I'm not mistaken, dear Mr. Badger, he said, we are now underneath the farm which belongs to that nasty little pot-bellied dwarf, Bunce. We are, in fact, directly underneath the most interesting part of that farm. Ducks and geese! cried the small foxes, licking their lips. Juicy, tender ducks and big, fat geese. Exactly, said Mr. Fox. But how in the world can you know where you are? asked Badger. Mr. Fox grinned again, showing even more white teeth. Look, he said, I know my way around these farms blindfold. For me, it's just as easy below ground as it is above it. He reached high and pushed up one wooden floorboard and then another. He poked his head through the gap. Yes, he shouted, jumping up into the room. I've done it again. I've hit it smack on the nose, right in the bullseye. Come on and look. Quickly, Badger and the three small foxes scrambled up after him. They stopped and stared. They stood and gaped. They were so overwhelmed they couldn't speak. For what they saw now was a kind of fox's dream, a badger's dream, a paradise for hungry animals. This, my dear old badger, proclaimed Mr. Fox, is Bunce's mighty storehouse. All his finest stuff is stored in here before he sends it off to market. Against the four walls of the great room, stacked in cupboards and piled upon shelves reaching from floor to ceilings, were thousands and thousands of the finest and fattest ducks and geese, plucked and ready for roasting. And up above, dangling from the rafters, there must have been at least a hundred smoked hams and fifty sides of bacon. Just feast your eyes on that, cried Mr. Fox, dancing up and down. What do you think of it, eh? Pretty good grub. Suddenly, as though springs had been released in their legs, the three small hungry foxes and the ravenously hungry badger sprang forward to grab the luscious food. Stop, ordered Mr. Fox. This is my party, so I shall do the choosing. The others fell back, licking their chops. Mr. Fox began prowling around the storehouse, examining the glorious display with an expert eye. A thread of saliva slid down one side of his jaw and hung suspended in midair, then snapped. We mustn't overdo it, he said. Mustn't give the game away. Mustn't let them know what we've been up to. We must be neat and tidy and take just a few of the choicest morsels. So, to start with, we shall have four plump young ducks. He took them from the shelf. Oh, how lovely and fat they are. No wonder Bunce gets a special price for them at the market. All right, Badger, lend me a hand and get them down. You children can help as well. There we go. Goodness me, look how your mouths are watering. And now I think we better have a few geese. Three will be quite enough. We'll take the biggest. Oh my, oh my. You'll never see finer geese than these in a king's kitchen. Gently does it, that's the way. What about a couple of nice smoked ham? I adore smoked ham. Don't you, Badger? Fetch me that stepladder if, you will pl if you'll please. Mr. Fox climbed up the ladder and handed down three magnificent hams. And do you like bacon, Badger? I'm mad about bacon, cried Badger, dancing with excitement. Let's have a side of bacon, that big one up there. And carrots, Dad, cried the smallest of the three foxes. We must take some carrots. Don't be a twerp, said Mr. Fox. You know we never eat things like that. It's not for us, Dad, it's for the rabbits. They only eat vegetables. Goodness me, you're right, cried Mr. Fox. What a thoughtful little fellow you are. Take ten bunches of carrots. Soon all this lovely loot was lying in a neat heap upon the floor. The three small foxes crouched close, their noses twitching, their eyes shining like stars. There they are. And now, said Mr. Fox, we shall have to borrow from our friend Bunce two of these useful push carts over in the corner. He and Badger fetched the push carts, and the ducks and geese and hams and bacon were loaded onto them. 
Quickly, the push carts were lowered through the hole into the floor. The animals slid down after them. Back in the tunnel, Mr. Fox pulled the floorboards very carefully into place so no one could see they'd been moved. My darlings, he said, pointing to two of the three small foxes. Take a cart each and run back as fast as you can to your mother. Give her my love and tell her we're having guests for dinner. The badgers, the moles, the rabbits, and the weasels. Tell her it must be a truly great feast. And tell her the rest of us will be home as soon as we've done one more little job. Yes, Dad. Right away, Dad, they answered. And they grabbed a trolley each and went running off down the tunnel. And we'll leave it for today and we'll find out what the big job is tomorrow.